Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. So let us get on to today's topic that we have today. So today we are going to be seeing something what is very important. It is used a lot in the real world as well. We call it as EIB, that is, Enterprise Interface Builder, Enterprise Interface Builder, or in jargon that we use for that, is called as EIB. And this is a very, very important tool which is used in Workday, and the main purpose of EIB is to transfer data from or to Workday, which means I can build an inbound data interface, which is going to get the data into the Workday system, or it can be used to extract data out of the Workday platform. Out of the Workday platform. What effectively it means is, for example, I need to create, say en masse, I need to create positions. Say I want to create 1000 positions, for example, I need to create thousands of positions. What I would do is I would use the EIB tool, we will deal about the UI part a little later, but I will create a EIB to create a position. I can create 1000 positions in just a flash. Instead of going through, instead of going through the entire UI, creating it one by one by one, instead I would create it all en masse just by the click. All right, all right, that is, want a typical EIB, which is an inbound EIB, is going to be. An outbound EIB is the reverse is to typically extract the data out of my Workday system and share it across in a specific format with an external vendor, post-transformation, something like a payroll vendor, absence vendor, time-tracking vendor or any other benefits vendor, something like an insurance or a medical policy or other relevant details, wherein the I can share the data from Workday to an external vendor that we call it as outbound EIB. So the data is going out of Workday system, we call it that as outbound, whereas a data which is going to come into the Workday platform is called as an inbound EIB. Make sense clear on what exactly an outbound EIB and an inbound EIB is. With the example that we have just given, any questions, or if I have to give it in a probably for those who are from people of background, your EIB is nothing but your version of component interfaces precisely the same. All right, those who are from people of background, I think for Oracle HCM Suite or from SuccessFactor also, we have specific inbound and outbound interfaces. The same one is what we inverted terminology. We call it as EIBs. And again, EIBs are very simple. We can have and have them as an Excel template, which means if I want to load their data into my Workday system, the UI is mostly nothing but an Excel format only. It's only an Excel, so you, instead of filling out the data manually, see, for example, if I want to create a position, what I would do is I would go to the position creation task, and then I will fill out all of these details regarding my support, regarding all the other details. I have to fill out all of this, and then hit OK, and then it's going to go across certain processes and everything. Do you expect me to be doing this a thousand times, to create thousand positions? Maybe not rather? Or I would use an EIB to create thousand positions. I would submit the values using an EIB template, which is more of an Excel format, which is very easy for your HR teams to operate, 
and all that needs to be done is simply put, push it, and then the system is going to do the rest of the job. That is number one. Number two, you may ask me a question, when I go and create a position, when I go and create a position, what happens in the back end? People may ask me, what actually happens in the back end is your create position. Business process is going to get triggered. Am I right? Guys, are you there? So because I thought for a second that I lost you guys. So only thing is you may ask me what exactly happens to the business process. So the business process is, or let me just pick any normal business. Let me take create position, BK sales. I am not able to find the default definition because you have like thousands of definitions. Ignore the error in this business process. So when I create a position, the create position business process also gets triggered. When I do it manually via the UI. Why are the UI? This gets triggered, but when I do it, why I EIBs also? The business process does get triggered, does get triggered. All right. But there are certain steps which cannot be triggered. Say, for example, in this particular business process, there are certain steps like a document generation, like calling another integration, which is integration in the sense, from this business process. I am going to trigger another integration to a third party or any other report generation. Those steps alone will not be triggered. I will repeat. When I use a business, when I use an EIB, it operates in the same manner, same manner as I do it in a UI, when I do it manually, except that I use it for more, for a bulk loading option. I load it for, use it for a bulk loading option when I want to load hundreds and thousands of same positions or higher terminations, change jobs, etc. But the same business process will get triggered. But what we do is some of these steps by default in the business process will not get triggered. Approvals will get triggered, but report generation, document generation, and a third party integration, say from this position, interface position, business process. If I am going to be sending across an integration to a third-party vendor to send this data, that will not get triggered. That will not get triggered. All right. So what we usually do is, whenever we know that for a specific business process we are going to have an EIB load, we usually create a separate business process definition only for the EIB load. only for the EIB load. We will create a specific business process, which is going to take care only of the EIB integration. And that is usually going to have only the initiate step. It's not going to have any of the other steps unless it is mandatory, something like a change, of change or assignment is mandatory. Rest of them is never, ever mandatory. Clear on this. So for a higher business process, there are two mandatory steps. One is going to be a change or assignment. And then next, the mandatory thing for your hire is going to be one is your change or assignment. And another is your personal information. These are mandatory ones. But for your normal position, also, I need change or assignment. And in my EIB definition on of my business process, I will only have the mandatory steps, which will also be automatically complete. Third, we will see that next also.
so am I making sense? Am I clear? We are not going to use this definition. We will create a separate definition, which is going to be used only for EIBs. Only for EIBs.